we're going to create an invoice, an automated invoice. It's going to look a little bit like this. Let me do control P so you can see what it will look like when you print it out to PDF and then you can add it as an email attachment and send it to anyone you need to send an invoice to. The clever bit though is going to be that you can change the invoice number here and then all of the information that needs to be updated will be updated, including the calculations to get the price, etc. So if we change our invoice number, this is now $480. So the first thing though is to create your template what the what the invoice is going to look like uh, google sheets helps you out a lot here so we can just do new from template gallery and if you scroll down to where it says work there's one that says invoice so if you click on here this will do the beginnings of your template for you there's going to be some things that you're going to obviously want to change like you need to input your company name, your address. We want to change some of these sections here. So instead of and add in a couple of extra. So as well as invoice number, this is merged. So we're going to unmerge this and unmerge below. And the due date is also merged. And so is the date. So we're going to have an invoice number and we're going to have a PO number. Instead of the due date, we're going to have an invoice date and remove the submitted on. And we're going to have a currency, which I'm going to have Great British Pounds and leave that as fixed. Um, and the payable to is going to be not going to change. That's going to always be to Bloomfield Analysis. And I forgot to say, if you're doing this in Excel, you might want to download as Excel and you can do the rest in Excel if you prefer doing that. I think it's best leaving it as Google Sheets. Then you can do it from wherever you are. And now we know what information we want in our invoice. We're going to, as I said, there's going to be stuff that's not going to change, like up here, and there's going to be information that is going to change. This is going to be the invoice for the invoice number, PO number, project name, invoice date, currency. And we're also, uh, just for this first video, we're just going to have one item in here. But we're going to calculate the VAT. Let's add our VAT rate. Because in the UK, we nearly always add a VAT rate of 20%. And we can just do a VAT rate of 20% and then that will calculate it for you. So these calculations are already in here. They do a product of the quantity times the unit price and they do a subtotal adding all of that. So all these little bits are in here for you already, which is quite good, quite time saving. Um, but the next bit will be to create a database so that we can just put in the invoice number and everything else will fill out for us. So let's do that now. So let's add our database. And the information that we want to update will be the invoice number, the PO number. We're going to add in the name, company name, street address and zip code. So what I'm going to do is unmerge these. I have to do it one by one. Um, so we can copy these over. Uh, edit, paste special and you can pay special transposed. And next we're going to add in the project name. I thought we'd unmerged everything, but obviously not. <laughs> and the invoice date, the currency is going to stay the same. Okay, there you go. I'm going to fill this in based on something where I filled it in earlier. With the power of editing, I've already filled this all in. 
you'll obviously have uh, your own database or your own invoices that you're going to make with your own details the bits that we haven't added in are the description quantity unit price so let's add these in as well and merge again I'm not a fan of these merged cells so let's add in description quantity unit price and then the total price is calculated for us i'm just going to add in one item in this video and later videos hopefully will add in more items and hopefully like a drop down list so you can choose different items for the drop downs so subscribe so you can see that but for now i'm going to fill in the descriptions and the quantities and the unit price my description is going to be a day rate for all of these because i'm going to use this for my uno juno invoices um, my quantity is going to change just so we can see if the calculations are working and i'm going to pay myself to, why not a thousand pounds per day nice right lovely let's start filling this in then um i'm going to add in something here called row number so you can see the calculations as we move so the first thing we're going to add is the invoice number so if you imagine our invoice number is number one and values only leave the format as it is because it looks quite pretty so row number we're going to find out what row this invoice number is on for this we're going to use a match so we're going to match invoice one and it could be anywhere in row a it's good worth clicking on the whole of row a because like if you just select that bit of the table you're going to add in more invoices and it's not going to pick them up so make sure you select the whole of row a and the search type we want it to be an exact match so that's a zero and that will say that uh, invoice one is on row two we can check that invoice one is row two let's try six that should give us row seven so the important thing in this database the most important thing probably is this invoice number has to be unique so once you've got your row number we can fill in all of the rest of the information uh, po number to find that we are going to use an index so index we're going to look for our PO number within column B. And what row do we want? We want row number seven. And you can either finish that off here. And that will give you PO number six. And we know that invoice six should match with PO six. If we change that to five or four, that will also change. Um, so you can do that with the index um, if you notice here you can also add in the column so you can add in a column there but we're only selected one column so we don't really need that but you could theoretically do a one you could have a comma without anything in it or you can leave it as that we're going to use that afterwards but for now let's fill in the rest so we can go po number was in column b we move along we've got our name company name street address as c d e and then we've got f so if we fix our row number so function f4 and copy that formula and the name was in c and then We've got D, E, F. Now, there's a quicker way of doing this if you've got the column headers. And this is where we use what a lot of people call index match function. So index match, we've got our index here, as you've seen, and we've got our match here. What we can do is we can combine them. To combine them what we're going to do is get the index and we we're going to replace where we've where we're looking up that row number here we're going to replace that with the formula from here so we're going to copy the match formula 
and then we're going to paste that into here like this and this should still work and it means that we don't need to have this row number here i like to keep it here for reference for now at least and um we first of all need to replace all of these before we can remove it anyway right so the next part that we can change and use the index match for is at the moment we're telling it what column so we're look at looking at column b but we can get it to look up the column header within the database as well so let's leave this one here and because remember if i said that we can use the column so i'm going to do this and a separate one we're going to do this in project name so project name so instead of looking at just column b we're going to select the whole of our database here and we're going to also look up the column and the column are we looking up again we're looking at the project name aren't we which is column g which is how many rows across one two three four five six seven sorry columns across seven columns across so that will give us the project is seven columns across so instead of having row number you could also have a column number what we're going to do is we're going to find that column number with another match function though so we're going to match project across here and it will tell us what column number we're in and don't forget to do the comma zero so that it's an exact match so now we know that the project three goes with invoice three. Oh, did I delete this by accident should just be able to copy and paste let's uh we have to do our fixing 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 we do not want to fix the project because this is going to move And the F, well, we do want to fix though. So function F4 here. And then hopefully control C, control V. No, I've done some fixing wrong. Ah, fix that as well. Right. So we've done all our fixing right now. We should just have to paste this information in. And it fills out the rest of the information for us. The same with the description. Okay, nice. The quantity and the price. And if you notice here, the total price hasn't actually calculated properly. That's because we've got pound symbol and it's not seeing this actually as a an amount. Well, it's seeing it as is is just text. So we need to change this. So our thousand pounds per day, we're going to change into a straight one thousand. And it does know it's a currency, <laughs> but if it doesn't, then you need to go into number. You can either click currency here if you're using dollars, or you can go into uh, pounds down here or custom currency. Custom currency means you can have it like this, or you can remove the pennies, which would be this one, but we want this one. So that's good. And now if we go to the invoice, we want all of these to be in pounds. So let's change our format here to pounds and our format here to pounds. There you go. Oh, and these two as well. So now if we change our invoice number, will be calculated for us and that's pretty much our invoice done so let's have a look at what that looks like uh, control P we don't want it landscape we want it portrait that looks a bit better what I'm going to do is add in a little bit more information at the bottom here and probably we can get rid of the row number now I think let's check if we can get rid of the row number yeah, we replaced all those with matches. Nothing is failing. That's good. Let's insert a few rows in here. 
like just some space to add in some additional information. Um, I want my title to be more important, even though I keep saying I don't like merging. I'm going to merge it and have it right at the top. I'm going to have it in a nice orange and bigger and the invoice as well. Should we change that? Probably have that smaller. <laughs> cool. I think that's looking good. I'm going to copy and paste some information in here. Uh, there's more formatting you can do. And also there's some formatting of here that we can do so it just looks a bit better. Or if we don't show the grid lines, but then we add in prettier lines, some orangey lines across the middle. And make sure these are all all bold, all the same text, size, etc. That there you go. Ah, a logo. We need to add in a logo. So if we insert image over sales, I'm going to steal a logo. Um CNBC logo? Google logo? What should we go for? Uh, I don't even know what that is. Let's insert it anyway. Obviously insert your own logo when you're doing this. Or not just a random logo you've stolen off the internet. I feel like I should know what it is since it came up quite early on. Uh, right, now control P again. See what it looks like. Mm, yeah. I'm going to add in my additional details at the bottom. They need to know where they're paying to. We need to have in our, our bank details, sort code, VAT registration number, terms and conditions. Make sure that they pay within 30 days or two weeks, whatever that should be. But all of those details are really for you to fill in. Um, this is just to show you how to make something that looks reasonable and is quite easily updated and then having this database um, is also great for things like if you want to try and calculate your VAT, um, you want to just add up how much you're selling, you can do dashboards off it, have it all in one place and yeah. Uh, okay, I think I've spoken enough and that gives you enough information. What we're planning to do next is maybe add in drop downs here for the for the different uh, items that you could be selling. So it's not just adding in one item at a time. All right. Thank you. Subscribe if you want to see any more. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye.